We are expecting a game-changing announcement this week. Sources telling City News that the WNBA could announce a brand new team to play right here in Toronto as soon as tomorrow. We'll wait on that announcement, maybe. With more on the impact that this could have on our great city, we are joined now by Savannah Hamilton, sideline reporter for the Raptors on Sportsnet. Savannah, welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming. Okay, we've got to go with the rumored announcement. It is expected to possibly come, but listen, we're going to just get excited now. <laughs> Let's, let's be real. Let's get excited now. What does it mean for Toronto to have a WNBA team? You've been covering this beat for quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, it means everything, I think, to the city. It has felt like kind of like a carrot dangled in front of the fans in Toronto for a very long time, now years. Yeah. Um, and now it's come to fruition, and I think there's a lot of excitement around it. Um, I think I know when I heard the news, I woke up to it. Uh, I was like, no way. It's just like, pinch me. Is this <laughs> one of this, like, is this real moments? Uh, and so, you know, it's still reported, but... You know, I'm pretty, uh, pretty positive. I think a lot of people are very positive and excited about it. Now, the timeline on it, yeah. we are hearing it could be not till 2026, but a lot of needs to be done until that time, right? Yeah, I mean, there's tons of things to address. Like, you know, there's infrastructure, there's personnel, and there's like, how's it gonna, ticketing gonna work? There's like lots of intricacies whenever you have an expansion team to a city. Um, also, we, we've heard that, you know, they're likely to play out of Coca-Cola Coliseum which you know, I think is a great venue for the team, just given the capacity. PWHL had their playoffs there. Um, and it's just, it's a place that's central and easy to get to straight up. So, um, you know, I think it's a great uh, spot, but there's lots of technicalities that need to be looked at on many different fronts. Yes, you yeah. mentioned PWHL. When that announcement came out, everyone went, oh, are they going to fill the seats? What's going to happen? Well, not only did they fill the seats, they, they filled them up pretty fast. And we saw the success of a female professional team here. So does this give you excitement on what the WNBA team in Toronto could do? Yeah, like Toronto is not just ready for a WNBA team. They're ready for women's sports. Mm -hmm. This is what is happening right now. And it's actually a trend across Canada. I was lucky enough to... Uh, fly out to Edmonton for the WNBA preseason game there, and they also sold out with over 16,000 fans that came out in Alberta to support the WNBA. So I think with this WNBA team coming now to Toronto, it's we got to look at it on a wider scope. It's not Toronto's team, it's mm -hmm. Canada's team. Yeah, we've got four Canadians right now in the WNBA. Uh, that speaks volumes to the future of the Canadian landscape when it comes to females in basketball. And you you yourself played uh, at CMU. You've got a part of the lineage of basketball. We were talking a little bit about your aunt, you know, played on the national team, was drafted in the WNBA. The list goes on. Yep. For you personally, you see this and you, you know, you speak to little girls and little boys yep. to see what could happen and what will be happening. What does it mean for you? It means everything. I think the conversation's changing drastically. I know when I was even coming up in school, talking about women's sports just wasn't that popular, not a whole lot of knowledge around it. But I think with the access of social media, there's just been a lot of access to the athletes themselves. They're very vocal about, you know, what they're doing on the court or off the court and stuff like that. But, um, but it just in terms of it's just gaining a lot of interest from the overall landscape. And, mm -hmm. you know, when I'm speaking to classes or, like, just getting a feel, I get a lot of, like, younger male fans just as much as female fans um, very interested in women's sports. And, like, you know, WNBA in particular, you know, I think I attribute a lot of the hype to also the Caitlin Clark effect yeah. as well. Yeah, what do you make of, you know, there, there are always going to be skeptics who say, yeah. all right, the price tag, you need to sell the ticket for this much to fill uh, the stadium or whatever. Um, wh what do you say to them who say, I don't know if it's going to succeed? I mean, do, we have do, enough the, time? do the research. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, the numbers, let the numbers do the talking. Yeah. You mentioned it already, the PWHL, oh, yeah. they sold oh, out wide. this season um, in terms of like a lot of Minnesota bigger school. venues. Uh, I'm talking about like Bank Arena. They went there sold it out within minutes. I think I believe it was under 20 minutes. Then they took it to a bigger arena called Bell Center, sold that one out within like minutes as well. So I think the numbers just speak for themselves. And if we could use any success from the PWHL and translate to the WNBA, which, you know, I believe that ba uh, basketball is huge in Toronto, huge yeah. in Canada. I think you could also translate that to expecting success. Um, the viewership numbers in the WNBA have been up tremendously actually I was even looking up this this morning they've been as high as higher than what they were like 20 years ago like this is the new highs for them again so I think just like 
everything is going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. I'm personally not worried about them filling up the arena, no. especially for the inaugural season. Um, I think it's be fun to watch both in person and on broadcast. Beautiful. Okay, so potentially this announcement happening as early as tomorrow. We will be watching this. Savannah, let's hey. go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you for having me.